We have been transforming what once was a very dated bathroom into a beautiful cottage style kitchen, one DIY at a time. And this week we are tackling our DIY backsplash and getting a new sink. A big thank you to Lutron for sponsoring this portion of today's video. A few years ago, we actually swapped out our standard light switches to smart switches from Caseta by Lutron. And I'm so excited to do that here in the cottage as well. And you guys have probably heard of smart bulbs for fixtures and lamps, but you have to buy a bulb for every fixture in order to make it smart. So instead of smart bulbs, you can install one smart dimmer or switch from Caseta by Lutron and turn all of the lights in the room smart. Caseta doesn't rely on Wi-Fi, so you can always stay connected to your lighting. And then once you connect all of your switches via the smart hub and then to the Lutron app, you can easily access your lighting on your phone. I'm also very excited to install Serena Smart Shades by Lutron as well in the cottage to control the natural light. So I got some swatches so that I could test them out in the space, see the light come through them. I love these for the whole house, but I wanna start in the bedroom because we get a lot of strong morning light in there. So I definitely wanna go with blackout options for shades to control that intense morning sun that we get. There are so many other features that make both Caseta and Serena by Lutron amazing additions to your home. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description box for you guys to tap and check them out. And again, a big thank you to Lutron for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Hello guys. Welcome back to the cottage. We have been, um, I have been bopping around to different portions of the cottage doing renovations. We were obviously in the living room because I had to get ready for Christmas. I had to do the bookshelves. I was too excited about all the things that we were gonna be doing in the living room. We're making so much progress in that space. Also last week, we did our DIY paved walkway, planned the landscaping for the upcoming spring season. So we've been just, you know, moving around, but we are back in the kitchen this week. I've also got to get the kitchen done. So in the last episode, you guys saw that I was trying to pick tile. We need, we need tile to go back here. So up to the range hood down below it. So it's going to be all behind the oven and then along just the skinny sides here, all here, all up here in this space. This also turns on. This is pretty all here. And then also over here on the other side, it's about 29 square feet of coverage. So I tested three different tile options. Here was the first one. It was very, you know, organic very lighter, lots of visual texture. Uh, it's pretty. We actually picked this one for the shower floor in the primary bathroom. As much as I think that this is beautiful and will have so much variation, it fits the, the vibe of the cottage. I just happen to lend more moody, more dark. This is the one that you saw, this shiny rectangular green gray charcoal and I love it, I do. And a lot of you guys said that the sheen on it would actually be, the shininess of it would actually be great for a kitchen because, you know, grease and things from the, when you're cooking, it would be easier to clean. So the shinier it is, the better. This didn't have any sheen to it. This was real, real matte. We're doing it. I got all the supplies. <laughs> I saw some pictures of this online and I was, I was kind of going back and forth. Okay, do we do it up and down or do we do it side to side? Do we do it brick pattern? What, 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 what do we do? Not like a brick pattern, not staggered like that, but just stacked right on top of each other. I think that's what we're gonna do. Gonna go just like this, side to side. If we had a shorter kitchen, if the ceilings were lower, I would opt to go up and down because it's going to make your eye look up. It's going to make the kitchen feel taller. It's just a visual kind of trickery with your mind. But since we have 12 foot ceilings, we are not lacking in height. And everything else in here is so tall. The cabinets go up tall and we had to reach the ceiling, you know? So it's, everything's really, really like elongated that way, like tall and vertical. I thought it would be a good idea to actually do it side to side because it would offer width instead of height. 
you know, so it would, it would give a different look. Since we had about 28, 29 square feet that we were trying to cover, I added some overage and we got 35 square feet worth of tiles. So we got 206 tiles total. So I have all my supplies, just like we did when we were doing all the flooring. If you guys saw us do the herringbone back there in the back, we're doing the same process really. This is basically mortar so that we can stick the towel to the wall. And I got it in a gray color because we're doing a darker grout. So you can get mortar in two colors, white and gray. And I have a bucket and one of those little spooly stir things that you attach to a drill. Oh, I also have my little trowel. So this is gonna get those grooves, nice grooves on the wall so that it really like adheres. And stuff. What I have learned is mix small batches <laughs> and things. I felt like I don't like being rushed because my stuff is drying. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I want to take my time. I'd rather remix another small batch than just waste things, you know? So, so I've got my water in here. I'm going to keep adding mortar until it gets to that creamy peanut butter consistency. I'm going to find the center. I think I want one full one right in the center. You know what I mean? Not, not a line. This is just like little details that you have to think about. 41, so it's 20 and a half. And I already got it kind of marked already because we put up the hood. Mix this one with time. Okay, double check that this is in the center here. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start here along this line because I actually want the next row to sit an eighth of an inch up from the countertop. And I have all my little spacers we're using from the last project, got all my spacers here. So I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna put one right in the center. So it's gonna go just like that. I'm gonna find the center of this actually and mark it. I'm crazy about centers. Using my trowel, I'm just gonna on here and make a huge mess in the process. When you're doing things on walls, gravity kind of like works against you, especially since this first one's so important. Okay, so we're getting to the point where we need to cut some. For every tile project that I've worked on so far, I have rented a wet tile saw from like a local like tool rental place. And it's not cheap. They obviously are big and they cut bigger. They can You can cut anything. And I always felt a lot of pressure <laughs> because I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not done. But every day that I have this machine is like costing me more money. I don't know, they were always big and bulky. It was a whole situation. So I was like, okay, I gotta rent one for this project. And even though it's, it's a small project, you know, I'm gonna have to rent this machine for the weekend. Did you know that they sell wet tile saws for 60 bucks? <laughs> Now do I, I know if it works? No, we're about to find out. This is cheaper than renting a towel saw and I get to keep it so that we can work on other things. I feel like we can't go wrong. And it's not very big, it's like a tabletop one. And that, I'm assuming that this is the blade. This is a whopping success. This is the best thing I've ever purchased. Just because I don't have to rent it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna cut some three inch pieces for the side and we're gonna keep going.
So it's, it's good to let the mortar cure really well before you put the grout on. So no tiles fell off. That's a plus. <laughs> I may be getting good. I haven't ever lost a tile, I think. Maybe I have. I think one popped loose in the bed, uh, the bathroom back there. I, I, think that, I think that did happen. But this did well. Let's take all these little spacers off. And then give it a little bit of a sponge bath. Just clean it a little bit. Then we're gonna grout. I've been thinking a lot about this because I'm like, I wonder how I can get like a really straight edge with the grout next to the windows. I think I'm gonna retape the trim so that when I, I can grout it really good next to the tape so it touches the trim there where I want it to, but then it's a straight line when I, and then I can take off the tape like before the grout dries so that there's still a clean edge. And I also want a lime wash today, which is exciting. So this wall is really, you know, getting finished, which is good. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a sponge bath, get the surface nice and clean of this stuff. The grout's gonna get everywhere too, but this is like chunky dried mortar. We don't want that in our grout. Got it all re-taped off in the right spots and all clean. So we're gonna grout. We are using color mocha. Looked at all of the samples on the sample card of the grout and I chose one that was the on the warmer side. I tend to like warm versus cool and since we have all these warm tones like we have um, the brown wood, we've got so much warmth in the dining room, pulling in from the trim from the living room too. It just made sense to pull out the warm tones that are already in this grout and have that highlighted instead of going more cool. So we're going with mocha, similar process to the mortar, mi mixing it with water. The only difference is the mortar doesn't dry as fast as grout does. I got that creamy peanut butter consistency and my grout float. This worked really well last time. Uh, we're gonna go for it. If I ask you, don't hold back on me. Only I definitely think you get better at tiling and grouting and stuff as you do projects. This is my best tiling job yet. I think it's, I'm, I'm pretty proud. That is done, except I need to seal the grout. So that's kind of the last step. I need to make sure it's really, really dry. Um, it seals the grout, it hardens it so that you can clean it, you know, and things like that. So it's, it's kind of like the last step. So we are gonna move on to lime washing the hood. So that was kind of always my intention, but I didn't quite know how the lime wash was gonna come together, if I should do it. If you guys saw episode three of the living room makeover, I did it to the fireplace and I figured out the exact formula. I gave a tutorial on exactly how I did it and how I came up with my custom colors. So I DIY'd my own lime wash paint, but of course you can buy it. We just don't have it readily available. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I love the color. I love the warmth that it brought, the wall. So I'm gonna do the same formula. We're gonna have two batches, one more watery and one thicker. The only difference in the two is more and less water. So in each of my mixing bowls, I'm gonna do one teaspoon of the pigment in each one teaspoon of the alum granulated powder or alum salt, 10 teaspoons in each of the lime putty that I made in the last project. It's still good, so I can keep using it for all my projects. And in the more watery version, we're gonna do 40 teaspoons of water. And in the more concentrated version, we're gonna do 20 teaspoons of water. This is kind of a layered process, if you will. 
we're gonna go in with lots of layers of this stuff. So the first layer is the more watery one. And then on the fireplace, I did two layers of the thicker one, and then finally went back over the top of it with another layer of the thin one. So four layers total. It turned out great. <laughs> I'll link all the supplies again. I'm also using a four inch wide brush and you just want to brush it on in random motions and that's, you know, that's all there really is to it. Like I said in the living room video, I was kind of intimidated to do the line wash just because I've never done it before. It turned out really well. And I'm just going over the plaster parts. Um, so not the bottom crown, just up here. Uh, the plaster gives it a lot of texture and then the lime wash just adds to that in a you know more visual way so it's really pretty and it does dry a lot lighter than it goes on like a lot i guess it might be the lime i don't know it, it just turns out lighter daydreaming is my new middle name this is not a game for Imagine it, it's my new best friend, and red is all I see. I got a PhD in love. We had a very exciting delivery this morning. If you guys have seen our quote unquote new oven, it was not the one we ordered, but I fell in love with it. And it was the most amazing mess up that could have happened. But there was one hiccup that it didn't match our sink. So now that it had this oven had this like antique white color, the sink that we have was pure white because our oven was supposed to be stainless steel. So I got some samples in, I looked at a color called biscuit and I really liked it. So since they had messed up on the color, they were willing to swap the sink for me. So this morning they came and picked up the white sink and delivered the biscuit color. I think it's so beautiful. It complements the oven so much better and it made it more warm in here, not so stark of a kind of like a white contrast to our granite. Even though our granite has lots of white in it, the white went really well, but this also goes really well. So it, it kind of just calmed it down. It, it paired nicely with like the brass elements and now the oven won't feel out of place or odd. So the only thing stainless steel we have in here is our dishwasher because that was actually a mess up too. It was a very hard time over the last two years or so ordering appliances i mean we waited over a year for our oven alone so it, it was it was hard this is our drain that hooks into the garbage disposal so i uninstalled the garbage disposal this morning so that we could swap the sinks out we ordered this one but this is the one we had installed initially but we didn't install this you see how much taller it is maybe we could order this color in a shorter one just feel like this gold looks so much better than the silver it matches better it looks more designer i would love the opportunity to use this one now that i have it all uninstalled and i'm gonna install it myself my plumber installed it the first time but uh since i just took it apart and he installed it the first time now i know how to do it again so i just need to pick up a few more supplies and then i can reinstall that easy peasy put some silicone around the edges so it's all sealed in and we have a new sink this area of the island has kind of been left undone, unfinished. So I definitely want to finish out this, what I'm calling a spice rack, but it could be for spices. It could be for pretty things. <laughs> you know, it, it's just a decorative feature looking from the dining room at the edge of the island. So it just wasn't flat. I just used the extra space. Um, so there's also extra space here. I left this open originally because we were still working on the electrical to the island. Well, that's all finished now, but I thought about doing like a pull out extra storage uh, for like skinny things like sheet pans and baking things. We have a lot of storage in this house. And I, I know that you can't have enough, but I feel like for now, I'm just gonna close it up. But so I wanna put shelves in here. I have three pieces of wood that are skinny enough to fit. So what I wanna do is cut these to size for inside stain them and also i have these brass gallery rails isn't that pretty so they're gonna go on each shelf like that and i have three of them okay first step is to cut these to size so i just measured it and it's 21 and a half okay so to attach the shelves to the sides to the thing in general i'm gonna do pocket holes i love pocket holes 
they work really well for me. I've got my jig to make the hole, the screws to go in the hole, and also the drill bit to put the screw in. I'm gonna make two holes at each end of each board. So four holes total per board. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and drill the holes for the gallery rods. So let me kind of assemble it so I know exactly where the holes need to go. So one slides kind of in the center and then there's one on each end. So we need to find the center, and basically mark where we need to drill the holes. Just give them a nice little sand too. to stain them same kind of combination that I've figured out is the closest that I'm ever gonna get to this older wood because it's aged for so many years I go in with a layer of gunstock which has a lot of orange and then I go on top of it with a gel stain in mahogany which has some red but gel stains so much thicker that it also allows it to have more oomph so more color adherence so i found that that combination looks really nice and that's what i did on the box that's already in there I did not put pocket holes this one. I didn't put pocket holes on the bottom so that I could just set it on the bottom right here. But like, and then I can just put pin holes in it. So now we gotta determine where these are going to go. So this would be one. We put two in here. Yeah, this is 30 inches. So 30 divided by three is 10. One's in. That is precious. Just a, little, just a little detail. I was digging back there to see if there was anything that I had that would fit. Like things like this would be too, for too thick. Oh, well that's pretty. I have the Women's Club Cookbook of 1922. But obviously what does fit is spices. You know, but like maybe get some like more aesthetic, more aesthetic containers. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We are continuing to make positive progress on the kitchen. The backsplash is a huge step in the right direction. So if I can get the cabinet doors done and painted and the oven installed, I feel like it's 99% done. I am waiting for a call back from a new plumber since my plumber can't get to it because he's working on other jobs. So we will see about installing that this week and I'm going to work on all of the cabinet doors this week. So I will see you guys very, very soon for the last episode of our extreme kitchen makeover, turning an old bathroom into a kitchen. We have like, we're so close, I feel it. I'll see you guys next Sunday. Bye guys. Kinsley, do you love it?